Hi, this is Carly Morgan from Historicish, and today I'm going to show you how to do your genealogy using the GoodNotes app on the iPad. This is my iPad. I love it very much. It's an iPad Pro, and this is the iPad Pencil, which I loved my iPad before I had one that used the pencil, but the pencil is key to life. I am obsessed. All right, I'm going to open up the GoodNotes app. It's this one down here. And here you can see all of my notebooks. I use GoodNotes for lots of different things, but one of my favorite things to do with it is to use it for genealogy. I have each of my family genealogies in its own notebook, and when I open them up, I can immediately have access to all of the records and research and documents that I've done for that family, which is amazing because I carry my iPad everywhere, so now I always have my family histories with me. And you can sort of see this one, do I know how many pages is in this one? This one, I have some research left to do. I'm at 451 pages. So if you're thinking about buying an iPad Pro specifically to do genealogy, I would encourage you to spend the extra little bit of money to make sure that you have storage just because then you aren't limited to what you can put on it. Um, honestly, I don't think GoodNotes actually takes up too much space anyway, but and so let me walk you through why I like GoodNotes so much. GoodNotes notebooks are a lot like regular notebooks. You just flip through them. You can write on them. But the nice thing is you can undo your mistakes. And you can import pages as templates, which is how I've created specifically genealogy pages. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go out back to my notebooks, and we are going to create a new notebook by going up here. Create notebook. And we will call this one sample. All right, so this is my brand new notebook. And let's say I was using it for family history. I can just go in here, family history, Ta -da. or if I wanted to be extra fancy with the super nice handwriting, I can zoom in using this feature up here and fake like I have unbelievably tidy handwriting, which is what I do for most of my genealogy. Erase. What are you not erasing? Oh, there you go. Or you can also hold down Import text, family, history. Mm, that was too big. Let's put that up there. And that's still crazy big. Okay. And there's other things you can do. You can go into other programs that um, do text and then import that as an image, all sorts of stuff, but we're not going to get too into that today because I'm just going to show you how to set up a notebook. So this notebook, I turn the page like this, and it has this blank page. This is the dotted paper. It's one of the ones that comes with the GoodNotes app. If I do this, it'll populate another page, and now it's a two-page notebook. Every time you do this, it just copies whatever page you're on and creates another one. But I don't use dotted paper very often in my genealogy notebooks. I love bullet journaling but I like worksheets even more. So I've created a set of genealogy worksheets and I've imported them. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna change the paper template. More options. Change paper template. I'm in standard US letter right now. Go back out to papers. A lot of these papers came with the app. Some of them, the ones in my papers, these are papers that I found online that other people had created for GoodNotes. It might be worth a Google search to look around and see what people have made for GoodNotes because there's some fun stuff. Um, the papers that I've created, I have in a folder called genealogy. I open that and then I have all these worksheets that I created and I am going to make these available. So if you want these exact worksheets, you're going to be able to use them. But let's say that I want to start an ancestor profile. Okay. I want to start a new chapter in an ancestor. I pick this page. Am I sure I want to change? Yes, I am sure. And there you go. It's changed. So here we have this worksheet, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to alter things um, to update each of your genealogy pages. So 
My favorite thing is to add photos. So let's add a photo to this one. Let's make up an ancestor image photos. This is gonna go to my um, roll of photos on my iPad. And let's use this cute photo of my grandma. Okay, I wanna put this photo of my grandma here because I like to have a pretty, a pretty young photo. I'm gonna use this photo of my grandma um, here. I like to have a pretty young photo and a pretty old photo on my ancestor pages, but if I shrink it down, it's gonna have like funky edges and stuff like that. So what I wanna do is try to crop it. Tap on the image, crop. She is so cute, isn't she? Let's shrink this down. How close did I get? I'm getting better at like estimating the size of, I'm gonna crop this a little bit more. These little boxes I've made, it's sort of a, sort of a guessing game. And I'll just, I'll crop this just a little bit more because I am a perfectionist when it comes to these things. Okay, that is going to make me very happy. Okay, and then let's say we know the date of that photo is 1924. Okay, let's add another photo. Image, I'm gonna go to my roll. And we'll do, let's see. This is my grandma later. My super beautiful grandma, who was the queen of Chinatown. Okay, the crop. I'm gonna get some of her costume, but not all. There you go. By the way, you can resize these after you've finished. You just tap on them and it gives you an option to edit them and then you can crop them up. Okay. Let's say this one is 1945. Okay, and there we have photos. It's easy to um, delete them. I am going to delete that. Delete. And if you didn't mean to delete it, I'm going to put it back. There we go. Um, you can use this handwriting, or I'm sorry, you can use the zoom in to make your handwriting better because it enlarges it. If you want to, you can also use text by showing doing that hold down and selecting text feature that I showed you. I personally like to have all of my books in my handwriting. I think it's more satisfying. And so on. Okay, here we have a page that I've completed. Um, I've handwritten in all the information and I'm going to add an index number that corresponds with that pre-printed index worksheet, which is one of the worksheets that's up in the um, templates that you can pull down. This helps me um, keep the pages together when I actually print them out, or sometimes when you're moving them around, like I can show you in this one because it has so many pages, and you're scrolling up and down, it can be really easy to accidentally put this page in the wrong place um, so if you do that, then it's nice to be able to open it and see, ah, this is number 11. So it should be with all of the 11s. It should not be with a 14. Okay, back to our sample. All right, now let's say that you're going to create another ancestor profile for this person's spouse. One of the nice things is that you can go to the next page. I'm going to change this paper template as well. Okay, I've got this blank one. Let's say this is her spouse. I can actually use the lasso tool to select the spouse's name, copy, paste, and save myself some handwriting time. Put their marriage data in separately. Um, this is handy when you're doing big blocks of information like a list of children, especially when you get to generations where everybody was having a dozen children. Um, or if you're copying census information for each person in a family, then you don't have to go back and uh, paste and 
rewrite all of the census information that would have been the same for everybody. So I use that copy and paste tool a lot. Um, as you can see, it's also, it's nice if you feel like your spacing is just weird or something, you wanna just move things around. It's really easy to do that.